In the last couple of videos, we built AR apps for indoor navigation for overlaying BIM models to show hidden pipes and ducts and also an app to spawn spatial anchors. In today's video, we'll see how to get started in creating a local AR multi-user experience. We'll be using Photons Fusion and Immersal's SDK to achieve this. Now before we get started, I'd like to thank Immersal for sponsoring this video and for their support. And for those of you who don't know Immersal, it's a company that develops technology like spatial mapping and visual positioning system that allows developers like us to create some cool AR experiences. Alright, so to get started, there are four prerequisites that you'll have to meet. Don't worry, I will give you an overview. However, if you want to know in more detail, then you can check out this video over here. So the first prerequisite is to create a developer's account. You can find the link to it over here or in the description below. Second is to download the Immersal Mapper app and log in using the same developer credentials. The third prerequisite is to use this app and map your environment. For this video, I used manual mode and carefully mapped this room. The fourth and the final requirement is to have a Unity project set up with Immersal SDK. Setting this up is really simple. All you have to do is go inside Windows, Package Manager, click on the plus symbol, select Add Package from Git URL, paste this link and click on Add. Once that's done, you'll have to navigate inside File, Build Settings, switch the platform to Android. And finally, inside the project validation tool, you will have to fix all the issues. Alright, so if you have met these four requirements, we can start setting up our scene. First, select the main camera and delete it. Then right click on your hierarchy, navigate inside XR, add AR session. Similarly, add the XR origin. Now here, make sure that the XR origin and the AR session have the position and rotation set to zero. Then in the project folder, search for Immersal SDK. Make sure that the search is selected to all and add this prefab to your scene. Now to get the developer's token, we'll have to first log in from the Immersal SDK. Here, you can use your developer credentials to log in. Once you are successfully logged in, you'll be able to see your token here. Then create an empty game object and call it as XR space and add the XR space component to it. Then we can add two data processors and reference it over here. Then create an empty game object as a child of XR space and call it as pose filter. And to this game object, add the pose filter component. Similarly, create another game object as a child of XR space, call it as pose smoother and add the pose smoother component. Then we can select XR space, add two items to the list and reference them here like this. Now to download the spatial map, create an empty object as a child of XR space, call it as XR map and add the XR map component. Now as you can see here, to download the map from cloud, we need a map ID. And to get that, you can visit the developers portal Click on view your maps, copy the ID of the map that you want to download, go back inside Unity, paste it here, make sure to check the box for map file and visualization and click on download. And now you will be able to see the point cloud of the spatial map that you had mapped. Now let's download some of the assets and packages that we'll need like the dragon boss monster, the joystick pack and photon fusion now you can find the links for these in the description below make sure to add them to your asset open it inside the unity editor and import the package now while the packages are getting imported you can visit the photons dashboard log into your account create a new app select photon fusion as the sdk make sure that you're using fusion 2 give your application a name and click on create then you can copy this app id Go back inside Unity, paste the Fusion app ID here and press enter. Now there's one last package that you'll have to download and import and that's the Immersal multi-user package. Now this is a custom package that we built. You can download this from the link below. Now this package comes along with prefabs like debug UI, joystick canvas and multi-user UI. You can select all these prefabs and add it to the XR space. And then you can change the aspect of the game view. Now just so that you know, we don't really need debug UI, but it's really helpful when you're developing because it can show you some errors or it can show you if the multiplayer is actually working or no. So if you open this prefab and inside the canvas, we have the debug scroll view, which you can use if you'd like to, but for now we will disable it. And then we have the multiplayer status and the player join status. So here it will tell you if a new player has joined or not. Then we have the joystick canvas and here we have the horizontal fixed joystick and the vertical fixed joystick. Now these prefabs are a part of the joystick package that we downloaded earlier. And finally, we have multi-user UI, which has two buttons, one to create a room and one to join a room. 
and it also has an input field where we can type the room code. Now going back to this package, it also comes along with some scripts. So let's have a look at them one by one. All right, so here we have the network manager script, which is a mono behavior, and it implements the iNetwork runner callback interface. To begin with, we declare variables to store the runner prefab and to reference the text mesh pro UI. We declare a unity event, which gets invoked when a player has joined. Then we create a singleton of this class and we create a property to reference the runner. Then on awake, we want to make sure that there's a single instance of the network manager. If there are more than one, then we are going to destroy it. Next, on start, we want to fix the region so that all the players join inside the same room. Then it has two methods to create a session and join the session. Now both the methods do the same thing and that is to create a runner and to connect the players to the room based on the room code that has been passed on. And now when the players join the room, it is going to log the player ID and invoke the on player join event. Next we have the connection manager. Now this is a very simple script. It has two methods, one to create a room and the other to join a room. We reference these methods to a button. So when the button is pressed based on the input field or the room code we have joined, it's going to either create a session or join the session. Moving on, we have the network dragon spawner. Now this once again is a mono behavior, but it implements the iNetwork callback interface. Now this script has a variable to store the list of dragon game objects and it has variables to reference the dragon controller, XR space and the camera of the transform. Now this also has a variable that stores the player reference and the respective dragon game object. Now on awake, it's going to find the XR space and reference the camera's transform. Next, it has a method to spawn the dragon. Now this method will be called from the game manager later on. I will show you that in a bit. But when the method is called, it's going to reference to the callback functions of the network manager. So when the on player join callback is invoked, it is going to spawn a dragon, a random dragon at a certain distance ahead of the camera. And then it is going to reference the rigid body of the dragon object to the dragon controller so that it can be moved around. And finally, we add to the dictionary the player reference and the dragon object that has been spawned. Now, as you might already know, we want all the content to be placed as a child of XR space. So to make that happen, we are going to use the initialize before spawn method. So here we are going to get the object and set its parent to the XR space transform. Now moving on to the dragon controller, it has a variable which allows us to set the speed and references the horizontal and vertical joysticks. Now here on fixed update, only for rigid bodies assigned to it, which means a dragon has been spawned. Only then you can use the joystick values to move the dragon around. Next, we have the game manager script, which has variables to reference the text mesh pro UI, the game object of multi-user UI canvas, and the network dragon spawner. Then we also have variables to reference the Mercer SDK, the network manager, and the localizer. And finally, we have a boot parameter to see if the session is paused. Now, when the game manager is enabled for the first time, we want to set the canvas of multi-user UI to false. And on start, we want to listen to the events of when the first localization is done and when the player is joined. So the main goal of the game manager is to wait for the first localization to happen. Once that's done, we can enable the multi-user UI canvas. After which, the user will be able to input the room code and either join a room or create a room. So when the user joins or creates a room, a player will be added. And now when the player is added, we want to deactivate the multi-user UI canvas and spawn a dragon. Along with that, the game manager takes care of pausing and resuming the session based on how good the tracking quality is. And finally, we have the spawn behavior. Now, this is a very simple script. On awake, it's going to set the object to which this script is attached to as a child of XR space transform. Now, this is very important to us because in networking, when you spawn an object is generally spawned outside. So to make sure that it's spawning inside the XR space, we will have to use the spawn behavior on anything that is getting spawned over the network. All right, so here we are back in Unity and now it's time to set up our dragon prefabs. So navigate inside assets, 4D will dragons, prefabs, and from these folders, you can add dragons. For now, I'm going to randomly choose one from each one of them. Now, as you can see, the materials are pink in color. To fix it, you'll have to go back inside the four evil dragons, materials, go inside each folder, select all the materials, then navigate inside edit, rendering, materials, and convert selected built-in to URP. Now, repeat this process for the other folders as well. And then you can select all the prefabs and scale them to 0.018 in all the directions. Now, as you can see here, each of the dragon has an animator controller. So select one animator at a time. And here we can delete all the animation except for takeoff, 
fly float fly forward and fly guide then add the transition from idle to take off fly float to fly forward and from fly glide back to fly forward so that these two animation keeps looping once it has taken off now do the same for the other dragons as well once that's done you can select all the prefabs right click on it navigate inside prefab and unpack completely now while these three dragons are selected we want to add the rigid body component so that we can move them using the joystick make sure to uncheck use gravity now since these dragons are network we need to add the network object component the network transform component and the spawn behavior component now make sure all these three components are added for all the dragons then you can select all of them navigate inside asset create a new folder called as prefabs and drag and drop this inside that folder once that's done you can delete the dragons from the scene and create a empty game object as a child of xr space call it as network manager and add the network manager component to this here it needs a runner prefab so let's create it we can create an empty object call it as runner prefab add the network runner component and also the spawn behavior then select the prefab and drag and drop it inside the prefabs folder delete it from your scene select network manager and now we can reference it over here next to reference the player join debug text we can navigate inside debug ui select the players join and drag and drop it here next add the network dragon spawner component to the network manager and here we can reference these three prefabs that we created earlier now this also needs a dragon controller so let's add it reference it over here and set up this component by setting the speed to 0.1 and reference the horizontal and vertical joystick by navigating inside the joystick canvas select the first prefab drag and drop it here select the vertical fixed joystick and drag and drop it here now to add a game manager we can add an empty object call it as game manager and add the game manager component to it for the debug text we can navigate inside debug ui scroll view viewport content and here we have the debug text which you can select and drag and drop it here next select the multi-user ui prefab and reference it over here and finally for the dragon spawner it's inside the network manager so we can select it and drag and drop it here now before we build and test it there are two more things that we need to do we need to add the location status and the post data so that the user know how good the tracking is and also an event system so that we can get the input from our device so to add the localization status we'll create a ui canvas and then search for the localization status inside the project window and drag and drop it inside the canvas similarly search for pose indicator prefab and add it inside this canvas now when we created the canvas it automatically added the event system for us next select multi-user ui and add the connection manager component we need to reference the input field which you can get over here so drag and drop it in this next select the create room button join room button scroll down and add an item to the on click event then select multi-user UI, drag and drop it in here. Now select create room button and from the drop down, select connection manager. And here we want to create a room. Similarly, select join room. And from the drop down, we want to select join room. And that's about it. Now to build this application, you can navigate inside file, build settings, add the open scene. Then make sure to connect your device to your laptop and then click on build and run give your application a name and click on save all right so once the build is ready install it on two different smartphones and run the application after the first localization you'll see the multi-user ui here the first player can create a room and the second player can join the room using the same room code once the players have joined you'll be able to see each other's dragon and control it as well this is just the beginning and it is so much fun already. That was so simple, right? You can actually build on top of this and create a cool game. If you do end up building something, then don't forget to showcase it with us on LinkedIn or Discord. Now in the next video, we'll see how to create a web XR experience using Immersal and Metacraft. So make sure to subscribe. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.